Be careful, my friends, for things can visit your door that are so subtle, and I'm not meaning that they're visiting my door because I don't have that problem right now. But I want you to see certain things that can happen if you're not watchful over the things that God has already shown you and talked to you. Somebody will come up to you and they will say, I don't mean to sound bad or I don't mean to sound nasty, but as soon as you hear that, but they're going to say something about their neighbor they have no business saying. If you have an issue with your neighbor, knock on that neighbor's door and talk to them, just like the scripture says in Matthew. You go to them and you talk to them and you work it out between them and you. And if you have a, a problem with someone in the church, that's the way you work it out. A neighbor might be different because may, maybe the neighbor doesn't know you as a Christian, and maybe they don't know Christ, and you're the only example they have. And so if you're the only example they have, then they need to see you live a holy life and keep your mouth quiet. Because if your neighbor disturbs you in what they do and whatever, take it to God and talk to God about it. The Bible says, don't take up a cause against your neighbor neighbor because your neighbor dwells with you and they're probably going to live near you the rest of your life if you're elderly like me they're going to be your neighbor for the rest of their life or the rest of your life and so therefore you should treat them good you should treat them kindly you should strive to work them out and work things out with them rather than having a problem you know Jesus Christ in the word, the word of God says, he restored that which he took not away, which means he always, he backed up rather than fight, rather than use his mouth to, to uh, fight. He knew where they were all going. He knew what they were doing. And he was a man of few words. And there was a reason for that, that he said, let your conversation be yea, yea, and nay, nay, and whatsoever else cometh of that is evil. He didn't mean that in preaching that or teaching or stuff like that is evil because he said what your what God whispers in your ear shouted upon the housetop. There are those who are called to bring things out into the light because whatever makes manifest is light. There are people who are called to do that. You know I I had given you testimonies of a lot of things that had happened to me. But <laughs> I have to tell you, I was not a saint before I became a saint. I was not a Christian before I had worked it out and became a Christian. Oh, I strove for it just like you're striving for it. I'm no different than you are. I've done everything that I knew how to do. And I wound up being persecuted for a lot of years mainly because people misunderstood, people thought this, people thought that. And, uh, you know, when you're a mouthpiece for God, uh, the enemy will find 100% uh, percent ways to, uh, and 101 or 10, to disturb you, to bring you to your knees, to bring you to a place where you will admit you're not, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know. <laughs> I have to laugh because there's so many of them that do that. But each man does not realize they have to answer for these things. And they, they turn around and they run smack dab into trouble. And then they think, well, this one cursed me or that one. And they start to pray according to those things. And it never goes away. It never leaves. When something keeps on coming back and it never leaves, it you keep having a problem with it and have a problem with it. Even in your own home, you keep having the same exact problem with your spouse. It is because you haven't backed up to find out where to go, how to handle it, what to do. In the beginning, oh, no, and like I said, I'm talking 50 years ago. I'm not talking about uh, things that happen now because none of these things happen now. But I remember these things very well and how I learned. I remember exactly what the Word of God says, that Jesus learned by the things that he suffered. And if you read the Word of God in the epistles, you will see in John that it says 
that Jesus has come in the flesh. And that is the doctrine of Christ. If Jesus has not come in your flesh and you didn't die to self and Jesus come and live with, you know, <laughs> you've got to understand that as you die, he'll live. It even talks about the things that I've been preaching as far as, as your soul prospers. So you will you prosper. Paul the Apostle said it. So Peter even said it. So those things you need to grasp hold of. If we take all the things that are wrong with us and we strive to get rid of them in one day, sure, God is a God of miracles, but it isn't going to happen that way because you can't be perfected that way. You can't be, it's impossible for God to, by miracle, just in one move, make you a different person because you have all of these memories, these thoughts, all of these things in the human. The Spirit of God comes down on you and cleanses you of all sin. And then you need, by choice, to pick up your cross and follow him. You need, by choice, to be able to decide you don't make excuses for yourself. You don't feel bad for yourself. You don't sit down and say, well, God understands I can't do this. You don't do those things. You take one baby step at a time because you're still a baby and you need to take that one step at a time. And if you use your milk that God is feeding you so that you could mind somebody else's business and learn how to see and understand there's this and learn how to see and understand that. You're still not cleaning out this. You're still not changing this part of your life. And you need to change that because everything is guided by your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions and everything of that has to be cleaned out. That agape love that of, of Jesus Christ can't sit across from a person, no matter where it is, whether you're in a restaurant or whatever, and truly care about another person without you yourself being dead to the flesh. Because your flesh will come in and say, well, they shouldn't wear that. Well, you know, my Bible teaches them to do differently in that. I won't look because I'm better than that. I'll I'll behave myself, but they ought to know better. There's something wrong with them. Lord, you know how bad they really are. <laughs> what a hypocrite. Don't you see what you should be saying? Oh, my goodness, Lord. They don't know what they're doing, and they don't understand. Help me to be that conduit to help them understand. If I can be that shining example rather than the one that my nose is up in the air and I'm just obviously better. I don't dress like that. And you ought to see it because I don't think like that. I'm so much better than that. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't make me like them because you forget where you came from. You were just like them. Before God touched you and before God changed you, you were exactly like them. And all you you had shown too much cleavage. You showed too much of your, your body. You showed too much. And, and you didn't try to do that. You weren't striving to do that. You just didn't know any better. And so when you come in cont with contact with people that don't know any, know any better and you judge and condemn them, well, they're going to pay for that. God is a righteous and a holy God. And he, they are going to answer to him. You're in the wrong pew. That's not love. That's not reaching out to a soul. You know, now I, ha I have to agree with certain things and tell you that young girl that had, oh, she was a beautiful young girl. She had beautiful blonde, long blonde hair, nice and thick. I mean, she just was beautiful. That her mother and her grandpa, who was very famous, allowed her to go out and witness to 35-year-old men in a bikini. And I mean, it was a skimpy bikini. Even if it would, would have been a two-piece bathing suit, that would have been too much. And then they go and say, well, they used her in what they call healing rooms where the Spirit of God would visit. And she was highly anointed. Now, 
I'm asking you a question to consider your own self. How could you these two things be true when God tells you to be modest and you're drawing souls to your body? You're drawing souls. You know, men are creatures that have problems that where they have to, and maybe one or two will turn their head and work real hard not to think that way. But they, the fact that they have to work real hard is your fault, is what you're doing. Learn. Learn to stay dressed modestly. I don't mean you have to dress in rags, and I don't mean that you have to, to be covered from here to here and here to here. You, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you making sure that you're not an enticement to someone. And men the same way. I mean, oh my goodness. I don't understand the world we live in. My world from years ago was not like that. My world was not filled with what yours is. And this is what makes it hard. How does God judge somebody who is brought into a world where they have no understanding? They never seen it before. They never understood. Now, how can you sit down and judge them and condemn them to death when you don't even know where they're at? How could you, how could you say that and not give them a chance? I'm telling you that the things you think and the things you believe have power. And they lock up people into whatever you think and feel. And you're making up your mind as though you were the only one that's holy. You can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it with you. And you can't do it with me. All I can do is tell you the truth from my experiences. When, when I saw people in my family delving into witchcraft, I saw the most horrible things happen in their life. I saw them come upon them. Oh, I saw for a season, they enjoyed themselves for a season. Everything seemed to be all right. But I'm telling you, and I'm not talking about my immediate family as children. I'm talking about the people that I did know on the outside of that. And I'm not talking about his family, their family. I'm not talking about anybody like that. Because I have a lot of ancestors. Uh, you know, in my ancestry, I have a lot of ancestors that went into that stuff. And and I had to understand that this is the works of the devil. And not to touch it. Because the true signs of it is are so evident and so real, God is not like that. God wants nothing to do with that. He wants to teach you how to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And how could he do that when you're positive, you have all the answers, and that you are a psychic, or you are this, or you are that, and it's a gift from God. I am sorry, but it is not a gift from God. It's touching the same things of Satan. It's touching the depths of Satan and understanding how to operate and work a power that is not of God and that brings you to, to the place. The only kind of gifts that you have, they're in the word. They're in the word of truth and they're through Jesus Christ. That is the only safe haven that you have. Because you see, Jesus didn't die to leave you instructions for you to go and say, it's going to be okay for me to do this. You're going to have trouble. I promise you, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you are told the truth and you do not repent of it, I don't care who you are. If you are told the truth by someone, it will penetrate your whole life because the truth is Jesus Christ. And he will, for your sake, not for mine, not for your neighbor's sake, but for your sake, he loves you too much to see you go down the path that hurts you, that destroys you. He died so you didn't have to go in that path. He died so you would not have to think those ways. He died so you would not play with the devil's tools. Because no matter what you say, there is a good and an evil. And when you run to the evil and play with it and come back and say that it's good and you're going to use it here, Oh, 
I know of a pastor that did that, and she was positive that because she was in the occult and her daddy was in the occult, they were positive that they had an inside track to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How could you do that? How could you blaspheme God like that and take from the occult, which is guided by Satan, and use it in God and say, this is God? You can't. You can't. There are many people that believe that there are good witches. There's no such thing as a good witch. There are many people that believe that there are good warlocks. There's no such thing as a good warlock. There's no such thing. It's once they go into the realm of the occult, you cannot bring it into the realm of God. You're going to have trouble. You're heading to a path that is going to destroy you. You cannot do it. Uh, uh, when I say you cannot do it, I don't mean that you're not physically able, that you're not mentally and emotionally able to choose it. I mean you won't get away with it. You will not pass from this life into the next one all free. You won't do it. I have seen so many repent of these things. I have seen so many suffer so bad in life. I've seen so many because what you've done is you opened up a door wide as hell and you gave in. You might as well said to Satan, come on, come on and get me. Come on, take my family and do what you want. Come on, come on. I'll, I'll pay this price for this information. Come on, you give me this information, I'll give you that. I'll give you my life. I'll work with this. I'll tell this one, this one. Come on, come on, give me more. I want this. How foolish can you be? How foolish can you be? You think there's not an end to it? You think that that pleasure you're having and enjoying what you call a gift, you think that you're going to have great pleasure with it always? You think there's not a price to be paid for it? Jesus Christ says, come unto me. He's the one that says, hey, I'll give you whatever you need. I'll help you with every situation. I'll show you the way. But you see, you won't sit as somebody that knows something. You won't sit. You'll have to die to self and go where you belong. And, and you just don't quite like that. And so the flesh profits nothing. The flesh cannot enjoy the things that you would, you want to, it wants to enjoy. So what does God do? God sends someone to tell you the truth in his mercy. Someone that'll get down on their knees and cry and say, Lord, have mercy on this one. They can't see. They don't know. Lord, please, please don't let the bad happen so bad. Open up their eyes before it's too late. Don't let their children and their lives be destroyed. That's how you pray for them. You pray, God, lead them to Jesus Christ. Forgive them for they know not what they do. But the one thing God says is don't let them have that power. Don't let them destroy. Don't let them draw in more souls. Put a stop to it, Lord. Make a way where there is no way that souls who run to you waken up. Lord, for the sake of many souls, we live in an hour of great evil upon not only this nation, but upon the world. And when you accept evil right along with the good and you claim that God made both of them, you are in the wrong pew. Because yes, God did, but you forget what Lucifer did. You forget that he wanted to be equal with God. So he rose up to make everything look like he could do these things. And he's got you by the nose. He's got you thinking that it's okay. He's got you doing what he convinced Adam and Eve of in the Garden of Eden. Eden, that you are like God. You will have the power to know for you what is good and what is evil. For you to choose what is good and evil. When God definitely left you a road map of what is good and evil, he, he first brought it into the commandments. 
You obey the Ten Commandments by loving the Lord with all thy heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. If you can't desire the best for your neighbor, no matter who they are, if you cannot desire everything that is good for them and pray for that goodness to happen in their lives, pray for their victories in Christ Jesus, pray for them to find Jesus Christ. If you're praying against them and praying them down because they're foolish or ignorant and they don't know, you're hindering them. You are, they can't even see God because all they see is you. They see your hand upon them and they can't see. The pain is too great that you put upon them. The burdens that you put on them, you do not understand what oppression is. What the burdens are is a person that sits there in judgment, in hatred, and uses God to judge others, uses God to say this is the way it should be. So therefore, yes, you pull down strongholds. Yes, you pull down principalities. Yes, you pull down rulers of wickedness in high places. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're pulling down actual people. You're pulling down the power of it. You're pulling down the principality of it. He says we wrestle, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. He was very careful. The word of God was very careful to tell you to keep your hands off of people. Because you did not die for them. Jesus Christ did. How dare we as people do those things? I didn't get blessed by listening to someone tell me, well, we got to pray that one, this and that one, that. And we got to pray that one, this and that one. Because they gossip, they need to get down. And they, I'm not a judge and neither are you. No. How they're going to see Jesus Christ is the love of God in you that looks beyond their faults and sees their needs. How they're going to find Jesus Christ in you is by your love. They will know we are Christians by our love. No, I'm sorry, but I cannot agree and believe with people who actually turn on other people because there's so many that don't even understand you. They don't even see what you see. They've never been exposed to the Bible, and yet you take that Bible and you sling it like as if it is something that you're allowed to cut down and do this and do that, and you're free. <clears throat> I've got news for you. Some of them are ignorant. Some of them don't understand. Some of them are like I was before I ever got saved 50 years ago. Some of them can't even see the swamp the horror of everything that happened to them was so great they couldn't even think there was a God. And yet you're judging and condemning them. This is why Jesus Christ said to, to, to leave the judgment of the world up to him. Yes, there are people who are in authority that God called to judge certain things. But I will tell you honestly, they are very far and few, and I'll tell you why, because they don't live it. If they don't live it, they are in the wrong pew, just like you are. They are in the wrong place, just like you are. And if they're not pulling down the stronghold here and here first, and if they're putting you into the mold of their church and their doctrine, they've got a problem because they're not putting you into the place with Jesus Christ. And that's why I say get into the word. Look what Jesus did. Look how he acted. Ask God to free you of everything that lies to you and help you to find Jesus Christ. That's all I'm here for. I've told it over and over. I don't want your money. I don't want anything from you. I don't want your support. I don't need it. I don't want you to, to encourage me or strengthen me. I don't need it. He is my everything, and he gives me everything. He shows me and, and affirms everything that he has given me. He gives me a mouth to speak the truth, and it's not going to change. It's going to continue. Do what you want. Hold your uh, prayer meetings and fight and destroy. Do whatever you want, but I'm not here to hurt you. 
I'm here to bless you. I'm here to help you. Because if you've got this much of Jesus Christ, I want to see it get to this much until it gets to this much. I want to see it grow. Every person in my life up until the time I came here, I always, always in the Lord was given the power to lift them up so they could do what God wanted them to do. It has nothing to do with pulling them down. It has nothing to do with finding fault with them. It has nothing to do. It, it looks at what God did in their life and helps them with that. Oh, if you could only find out that secret in Christ that's filled with love, that's filled with truth, that's filled with the right way, you will be a blessed person.